Hello friends, welcome to Weathercast. Today I am going to talk about Rossby waves and in this short educational video I am going to discuss about the basics of uh, the Rossby waves and how do they affect the weather patterns. So before we get into the specifics of uh, what are Rossby waves, let us just uh, talk about what are waves in general. They are nothing but disturbances in ocean and atmosphere that repeat themselves in space and time. And in that uh, uh, fashion, they transfer energy from one place to the other on a spatio-temporal scale. So this is a typical wave pattern and uh, it could either move uh, towards the right or towards the left, depending on what kind of dispersion relation they uh, have. So when you talk about waves, two things become important. One is the wave number, which is how many wave packets are traveling in a given space. And what is the frequency? Uh, that means how frequently do, do they repeat in space, in, in time. Okay, That is why the spatio-temporal nature of waves are very important. And how do they affect the weather? They are uh, kind of the connecting feature between uh, uh, extra uh, uh, or the modes of tropical variability uh, to the clouds. So without the action of waves which transfer the energy, there is no seamless connection between the tropical variability that we see in the uh, atmosphere which is the El Nino cycles or the uh, intertropical convergence zone movement or the Magellanic oscillation. Uh, how do they actually connect to the formation of clouds is through the uh, uh, transfer of energy uh, that occurs through these waves. There are many different types of waves, but we are going to talk about Rossby wave today because uh, that has a lot of uh, capability to affect the weather patterns and uh, it is frequently seen in atmosphere and as well as ocean. That's why we are going to focus on the Rossby waves. And as I have written here, the waves are affected by Earth's rotation. So in the next slide, we are going to see what is the con uh, <coughs> exact mechanism by which uh, these waves are produced. So uh, when you talk about Rossby waves, one very important aspect is something known as F-plane and beta-plane approximation. So we all know that the um, our Earth rotates at a speed of uh, one rotation per day, so which is uh, known as the frequency of rotation, which is 24 hours. So it completes one cycle in a span of 24 hours. And uh, all the parcels that are present in the uh, on the atmosphere or ocean, uh, they have a tendency to move either latitudinally or longitudinally. And we all know that the effect of rotation is highest uh, near the pole and the lowest near the uh, equator. <clears throat> the reason is because this F0, which is the value of the Coriolis parameter, uh, is uh, defined as 2 omega sine theta, where omega is the frequency of Earth's rotation. So if you put that sine theta, so theta is 0 at equator and 90 at poles, sine 0 is 0. So the Coriolis effect is lowest or almost negligible or almost nil near the at, at the equator. And only once you start moving away from the equator, the F-plane becomes important. So F-plane approximation means nothing but doesn't matter a parcel moving from equator to pole, that particular parcel has the same value of F0 and it is not dependent on the latitudinal variation okay so in the sense that it has a constant value so if i take a parcel from here it i'll just take a constant value of that uh, coriolis parameter and i will allot it to this particular parcel but then there is something known as beta plane where a parcel which is moving from the equator where the coriolis force is zero and if it moves slightly let us say five degree north or five degree south of equator then the effect of Coriolis or rotation will come into picture. But since the F plane assumes that it is constant with latitude, a parcel starting near the equator will always have a zero value of uh, the Coriolis parameter. This is where the beta plane comes into picture, where we say that irrespective of whether the parcel is moving uh, from the equator towards north or south, the Coriolis will automatically come into picture through this beta plane or this beta parameter even though F0 will be 0 because of sine 0 which is uh, which renders F0 0 the Coriolis parameter will still have a value which is dependent on this value of beta 
So this is what is called beta fin approximation. It, it accounts for the curvature effects at mid latitudes as well as the fa fact that at the equator, any parcel starting at the equator has a zero Coriolis. But uh, we all know that parcels move north and south. That's why the beta plane effect becomes very important because a parcel which has slided north or south will automatically gain some Coriolis force and that is accounted for through this beta plane. And this beta plane is the important aspect of Rossby wave because if you the Rossby wave actually is, is a wave which either is near the mid latitude or near the equator. Okay, so the mid latitude Rossby wave is known as the jet stream and the equatorial Rossby wave is known as the mixed Rossby wave or a equatorial Rossby wave. So the effect of as you can see the Rossby wave has a very important part where beta plane becomes very important because the, the curvature will change the Coriolis photo drastically and hence the parcels will attain a different kind of a wave pattern which we call Rossby wave or if the parcel is starting at the equator it will move up north and south and if you don't account for this beta plane which is very important at uh, mid latitude and as well as equator you will not get these Rossby waves. So the presence of this beta plane actually makes the uh, Rossby wave develop at mid latitude and at equator and that's what is very important and that's why the beta plane effect plays a very important role because it has the tendency to change the vorticity and it results in a skating motion around the equator which is slightly to the north and slightly towards the south of the equator and as we all know once the parcels oscillate up and down they also have a tendency to move either e uh, uh, westward or eastward okay so that is where the perturbation of a wave which is that's how the wave develops okay a parcel at the equator moving up and down because of the beta plane effect uh, results in a formation of a Rossby wave which then travels longitudinally either west or east. So the beta plane effect is very important and because of the beta plane the change in the vorticity results in a skating motion which is nothing but movement of the parcel up and down thereby creating a, a wave source which moves longitudinally uh, either west or east. Okay. And that's exactly what we call the Rossby wave. So this type of wave Rossby wave is very prominent at the mid latitude or at the equator where the beta plane is very predominant. So now when you talk about waves there is something known as the phase speed and the group speed. So a wave that is developed cannot be only a single wave it will be a mixture of waves. So when the waves mix together then they either mix in a constructive fashion or a destructive fashion resulting in something known as a group speed or a group wave. And a group wave has a very different characteristic than that of an individual wave and that is what we call as the dispersion relation because you can see that a single wave is moving towards the right okay but a multiple combination of all these waves resulting in a, in a, a group wave may have a tendency to move towards the left and that is what we call the dispersion. And each wave has a very unique dispersion relationship where if the phase velocity is equal to the group velocity that means the wave traveling uh, in one direction that means that the energy is also going to pr propagate in the same direction. However, if the phase velocity is negative of group velocity, so here the phase velocity is the velocity of a single wave, group velocity is the velocity of a mixed, all the waves put together. So if the wave is traveling towards the east, then the energy is going to travel towards the west. So these are called the dispersive wave phenomenon. Rossby wave is a highly dispersive wave, which means that it is not necessary that the, if the direction of the wave is east, then uh, the energy could transfer towards the west because they are highly dispersive. The second uh, nature of dispersive wave is that the velocity of the wave and the group velocity of a wave cannot be the same. That means one can travel faster than the other, which means a uh, wave will be coming, but the effect of the wave will be will be felt later but the energy transfer is already occurring ahead of it okay so this is like uh, something uh, the energy has so you, so when, when you're sitting in a beach the effect of wave comes in later where you are so the effect of wave a phase effect of wave is nothing but you will just be lifted up and down okay but the energy of the wave is when you will be propelled forward or backward so sometimes if you're sitting on a beach you would have felt that uh, even before the wave is hitting uh, or even before the wave comes you feel like you are getting pushed away. That means that the energy of the wave has already reached before the, the wave trough and uh, has reached you. 
Okay, so this is the concept of dispersive and non-dispersive wave, and this plays a very important role because either what can happen is energy can travel faster than the wave itself, or energy can travel in a different direction than the wave, and that is why uh, even if the wave is in Bay of Bengal, let us say Ross Bay wave is in Bay of Bengal, the effect can be felt in Arabian Sea because the group velocity is greater than the phase velocity, so the energy has traveled ahead of the wave itself. Or the second thing is the negative aspect where the phase velocity is negative of group velocity that means the wave is propagating towards uh, west but the energy is propagating in the eastern direction which means even though the wave is in arabian sea bay of bengal will feel the energy of the wave because of the negative relationship so these dispersive relationships of rossby wave makes it a very interesting bunch of waves to study and their dynamics are very interesting uh, so, uh, if you look at the frequency versus wave number chart, which is what characterizes a wave, it, I had told this in my first slide, uh, K and omega, then you will see that uh, equatorial Rossby wave, which is here, uh, has a tendency to move towards west. And when you look at the Rossby waves, then there are multiple Rossby waves. There is, forget about Kelvin waves, there are a short frequency Rossby wave, there is long frequency Rossby wave. So, the long frequency Rossby waves are... Uh, uh, means that the energy and uh, um, the so so the so so these long frequency Rossby waves are actually the waves which move from east to west. Okay, so their movement is from east to west, but their energy propagation doesn't have to be in the same direction because they are dispersive in nature. So the energy propagation could either be uh, lo uh, lower or it could be higher. That means the energy has reached before the wave reaches or energy will reach at a lag like the wave has reached and then slowly the energy will reach okay uh, then there are short frequency Rossby wave which has an eastward propagation and this is the jet stream that we say call because the jet streams have a shorter time scale than the long frequency Rossby wave that are seen in the equatorial regions uh, so the that's why you have to decouple these two Rossby waves and uh, equatorial Rossby waves are uh, have a much more imprint on the weather conditions uh, because uh, they 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 uh, they they persist for a much longer time. Whereas the so short frequency Rossby waves are usually seen at mid latitudes, uh, and they have a very uh, smaller time scales. So long frequency Rossby wave moves uh, east to west, whereas short frequency Rossby wave moves from uh, east to west. Uh, sorry, west to east. Okay. These are the different types of Rossby waves that you encounter in ocean and atmosphere. So here you can see the equatorial Rossby wave and this is the jet stream which is the mid-latitude Rossby wave and this is an ocean which is also moving from east to west. So these two waves, Rossby wave which is the equatorial Rossby wave and the ocean Rossby waves are have a long time scale and they will move always move from east to west and energy will, uh, since uh, Rossby waves are dispersive waves, energy may move either faster or slower than the wave itself. Similarly, uh, this Rossby wave in mid-latitude is the short frequency Rossby wave which is which has a time scale of 10 to 14 days and these waves are also dispersive so uh, same thing applies where energy may lead or lag the wave itself. And finally, uh, with this is the last uh, slide, the long waves which is what is very important because I told you that long waves uh, since they persist for a longer time they have a very uh, large imprint on weather and climate because they can redistribute momentum they can uh, adjust to a large scale forcing like El Nino or MJO or any other large scale forcing. They can transmit energy for longer duration. They can interact with the uh, general circulations like Hadley cell or uh, ocean circulation cells and all those things. And they can delay some climatic events because of the nonlinear relationship between waves and uh, large scale forcings. And they can also intensify the boundary currents. So long waves have a very uh, interesting imprint and that is why the long frequency Rossby waves are the ones which are near the equator which are very difficult to predict and their uh, imprint on cyclones, their imprint on monsoon is something which uh, is an uh, area of active research. Alright, so this is what I wanted to talk about. I wanted to give you a flavor of Rossby waves. There is much more to uh, it than what I have covered in the video but I hope that this actually gives you a good idea about Rossby waves and in the next uh, when you look at Rossby waves next, you will think about whatever we discussed today. Alright, thank you so much and have a good day. Bye.